Hey, Second West. Anybody recognize where we're at? We are here at Live Oak School today, getting some planning done and making some packages for you. Wanted to show you I am being safe and wearing my mask, but since it's just me here, I'm gonna take this off so you guys can hear me read a little bit better. Okay, so we are on chapter 35 of Where the Mountain Meets the Moon. And it's a short chapter, but it's a fun one. So I'm excited to read it with you today. Chapter 35. After the great storm, Ma and Ba worried that vast damage had been done to the village. And when the sun shone in the morning, the village looked as if it were in ruins. Large tree branches had fallen and a clutter of leaves and roof tiles and dust and dirt littered the ground. Yet, when the villagers began to clean, they saw the storm had not harmed as much as they had feared. At least no homes were destroyed, the villagers said to each other, and we know everyone is safe. Well, everyone except for Min Lee, they added silently. Ma and Ba said nothing when their neighbors paused awkwardly. They helped pick up the broken branches, swept bits of pottery and tile from the street, and nailed shutters. At night, they quietly sat together at the table with the goldfish. Though Ma had heard nothing, Ba remembered the fish's words about the fear in the wind. It filled him with worry, and he waited for the fish to speak again. However, it remained oddly silent. Finally, when Ma was busy helping a neighbor, Ba tried to question the fish. During the storm, you said there was fear in the wind, Ba said to the fish. Whose fear was it? Was it Min Lee's? Was she afraid of something? The fish stared at Ba with its round eyes and made no sound. Please tell me, Ba said, his hands around the bowl. The fish swam noiselessly in the water. Ba was puzzled. Had the fish stopped speaking? Or was he now unable to understand? Or perhaps the fish had never spoken and it had all been in his imagination. Ba placed his ear close to the water. Was that faint bubbling a whisper? He strained closer, his ear beginning to dip into the water. What are you doing? Ma asked as she came into the room. Ba jerked his head up, his ear dripping with water. Uh, nothing, he re replied sheepishly. Were you cleaning your ear in the fishbowl? Ma said, slightly appalled. Not exactly, Ba said awkwardly. A cross look streaked across Ma's face. But as she looked at Ba, rubbing his ear shamefacedly, she did something she hadn't done in years. She laughed. You look so silly. If Min Lee were here now, Ma said, she would laugh at you. Yes, she would, Ba said, and he too began to laugh. She would laugh until she cried. Their laughter intertwined, but when they looked at each other, they could see the tears forming were not from joy. And that was the end of chapter 35. So I can tell Ma and Ba are really starting to miss Min Lee. And I can make a connection to that because I miss you all so much and I wish you were here with me. Um, but thank you for following along in our read aloud. Karen will pick up on chapter 36 tomorrow. Bye, Second West.